Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Genesis chapter 46. So Israel set out with all that was his, and when he reached Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob, here I am, he replied. I am God, the God of your father, he said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again. And Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. Then Jacob left Beersheba, and Israel's sons took their father Jacob and their children and their wives in the carts that Pharaoh had sent to transport them. So Jacob and all of his offspring went down to Egypt, taking with them their livestock and the possessions they had acquired in Canaan. Jacob brought with him to Egypt his sons and grandsons and his daughters and granddaughters, all of his offspring. These are the names of the sons of Israel, Jacob and his descendants who went down to Egypt. Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, the sons of Reuben, Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi, the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul, the son of a Canaanite woman, the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari, the sons of Judah, Ur, Onan, Shelah, Perez, Zerah, but Er and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul. The sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun were Sered, Elon, and Jahalil. These were the sons Leah bore to Jacob in Padan Aram besides his daughter Dinah. These sons and daughters of his were thirty-three in all. The sons of Gad were Zephon, Haggai, Shuni, Esbon, Eri, Arodi, and Ariel. The sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Beriah. Their sister was Sarah. The sons of Beriah were Heber and Malkiel. These were the children born to Jacob by Zilpah, whom Laban had given to his daughter Leah, sixteen in all. The sons of Jacob's wife Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. In Egypt, Manasseh and Ephraim were born to Joseph by Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. The sons of Benjamin were Bela, Becher, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Muppin, and Huppin, and Ard. These were the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob, fourteen in all. The son of Dan, Hushim, the sons of Naphtali, Jazil, Guni, Jezer, and Shillam. These were the sons born to Jacob by Bilhah, who Laban had given to his daughter Rachel, seven in all. All those who went to Egypt with Jacob, those who were his direct descendants, not counting his son's wives, numbered sixty-six persons. With the two sons who had been born to Joseph in Egypt, the members of Jacob's family, which went to Egypt, were seventy in all. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get directions to Goshen. When they arrived in the region of Goshen, Joseph had his chariot made ready and went to Goshen to meet his father Israel. As soon as Joseph appeared before him, he threw his arms around his father and wept for a long time. Israel said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen for myself that you are still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and speak to Pharaoh and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household who were living in the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds. They tend livestock, and they have brought along their flocks and herds and everything they own. When Pharaoh calls you in and asks, What is your occupation? You should answer, Your servants have tended livestock from our boyhood own, just as our fathers did. 
Then you will be allowed to settle in the region of Goshen, for all shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. Verse 1, So Israel set out with all that was his, and when he reached Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob, here I am, he replied. I am God, the God of your father, he said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. Now, friends, this is a powerful statement because Jacob is one man. He represents one family. He has 12 sons and daughters-in-law and grandchildren and some daughters as well. But they're going down as one family into Egypt. And the Lord says in verse 3, while you're in Egypt, I will make you into a great nation there. So if you can receive what I'm saying, Egypt was the incubator that produced the Jewish people in mass as a people group. They were only one family, the family of Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob, when they went down into Egypt. But they came out a people group, and they remain as a people group to this day. It's a fascinating story from one man, Abraham, was born a whole nationality, if you will, the Hebrews, the Israelites, the Israelis. And so the Lord says, I'll go down there ahead of you. Don't be afraid. I'm going to be there with you, and I'll I'll take care of all the details. And he goes on in verse 4 and says, I will go down to Egypt. I will surely bring you back again, and Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. Now, two things. God, of course, is in the midst of this incubator situation with Egypt, with Israel going down. Israel is going for protection, just as the son of Abraham in the person of Jesus would later go down to Egypt for protection. And so Abraham had gone previously down to Egypt for protection. Jacob was going down now. All of the Jewish people were going to Egypt for protection. And ultimately, Jesus himself would go down to Egypt as a little baby to be protected from Herod, who was trying to kill him. So there's a long history between the Jewish people and the Egyptian people. And um, this is a a major turning point in the family of Jacob in that they go down to Egypt. And the Lord says to Jacob, interestingly, I will bring you back again, and Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. Now, he's talking about Jacob's death. You're going to die there, and Joseph, your son, is going to close your eyes. He's going to literally pull your eyelids closed over your dead eyes. But I'll bring you back again. Now, he's talking about bringing his body back, but he's also talking about the future and the resurrection that Jacob will one day participate in, and he will physically embody his redeemed flesh, his renewed body again, and walk in the Holy Land. So God says, I'll bring you back again, not just your dead bones, but you yourself will come once again to the promised land in due season. So Jacob goes down with his sons, his grandsons, his daughters and granddaughters, all of his offspring. And Genesis 46, 27 says, With the two sons that had been born to Joseph in Egypt, the members of Jacob's family which went down to Egypt were 70 in all. Now this is a very important number in Judaism. 70 is the number of the elders of Israel that Moses would later appoint to be over the children of Israel and when they were in the wilderness wandering. 70 is the number that the Sanhedrin would choose for the members of the council. And so 70 was a very significant number coming first from this family of Jacob that went down into Egypt and later enduring through Judaism and all sorts of various traditions and scriptural references. Jacob then sends Judah to represent him. Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get directions to Goshen. So notice once again that Judah is not just the fourth born son now. He's a leader in the family and Jacob relies on him. Jacob had sent Judah down to Egypt not knowing yet that Joseph was his son, and he trusted Judah to take Benjamin and to return Benjamin, and Judah had done all things well. So now Jacob is choosing Judah as his emissary to go to Joseph and get directions. Joseph is reunited with his father. He throws his arms around his dad and and weeps on his, his chest for a long time, and I'm sure that this was quite a reunion between father and son. We can only imagine And Joseph sets the stage. He says, when you're introduced to Pharaoh 
and he asks what your occupation is, you should say that you've tended livestock from your boyhood on, just as your fathers did. Then you'll be able to settle in the land of Goshen. Now, this was a preferred location, but apparently this is where uh, the livestock was kept, and the Egyptians despised the land of Goshen because that is where the livestock was kept. So Joseph had a plan. And uh, the Jewish people would settle in Goshen, and Goshen became somewhat synonymous for a good place among the Jewish people. But as we close out this chapter, I just want to acknowledge the hand of God in all of this. Lord, we see that your sovereign hand was moving uh, behind the pages of history, first in the life of Joseph going down to Egypt to prepare the way, and then later bringing Jacob and all of his descendants to Egypt to be protected during a time of famine, and then to move from being one family into a great people in the house of Egypt. They became the house of Israel. And so, Lord, we see that you are indeed moving behind the scenes for them and for us. We invite your unseen hand today to further your purposes in each of our lives now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.